Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. All right, we're gonna start off this morning with this picture sent to me by my subscriber, Sarah Sullivan. And these are lightning bolts striking the Grand Canyon on a stormy night in Arizona. How cool is that? I believe the photographer is somebody named Rolf Mader. All right, this next picture was placed up on Twitter by the handle HRH Prince William, Prince of Wales. And it says, I absolutely adore the scenes at Windsor Castle in the morning. I have to agree, that is a beautiful photo. I love the deer running, running across the long walk there. Just fabulous. And finally, from the Twitter handle Beautiful World, photographer Clint Ralph spotted a hawk walking like a soldier in search of food. Love it. We're going to jump right in today with this story that came out that um, Meghan and Harry, it's being alleged, were issued an ultimatum on their royal family role that they have to choose, they have to pick a side, because you can't make profits from projects that damage the royal family while you stake part in royal family events. And I completely agree with that. We know that the Courtiers book is coming out. Apparently, Harry and Meghan are really bracing for the publication of that book um, because the, the extracts coming out are shocking. Apparently, Harry and Meghan did send a threatening letter before the article was printed. Uh, forget the book, before the article even came out. And of course, the article was printed and no legal action uh, took place because you can't sue when things are true. Anyway, um, they've been told that you can't be in the royal family and then decide as a commercial animal you're going to go and do what you want and then get back to the royal stage. And um, they're going to have to pick a side. All right, moving on. The stories are coming out now that Charles said he saw tremendous flickers of hope when he spoke to Harry and Meghan at the Queen's funeral and thinks he might could mend the fractured relationship with the Sussexes. Um, I gotta be honest, no. Um, I think if his reign is going to succeed, the UK public is never going to accept them back after the things that have happened, after the lies that they've told, after the damage that they've done. You know, what's coming out in this book is that they didn't want Frogmore. They saw it as a prison. They wanted to live in Windsor Castle. And that when they didn't get what they wanted from the Queen, they felt disappointed, and that's why they left. And um, since then, they've been attacking the royal family at every turn. So I don't understand how Charles feels that there can be any kind of reconciliation with them. They've lied. They've defamed the family. They've attacked Catherine. She bullied a three-year-old little girl. I mean, for the love of goodness, it's just not going to happen. You know, the queen made it very well understood that you can't be in and out. You've got to be one or the other. There is no compromise. And so they've already been told by the queen before she passed that you, you work for the monarchy. The monarchy doesn't work for you. That's not the way it works. Um, I think maybe they think now that they can soften up Charles. But like I said, if Charles wants his reign to go smoothly, he's not going to be able to bring them back in. It's just not going to happen. All right, next up, Charles uh, went back to work after the mourning period. His mourning period has ended. However, it looks like he's going to stay in Burke Hall for a little while longer. I mean, that was one of the Queen's favorite places. And at the same time, it's come out now that King Charles's coronation date is set, but it is remaining a secret at this time. Now, another thing that's happening is that um, King's press team face a hundred staff redundancy warning. So there's staff that's gonna lose their jobs and apparently they knew this was coming. They knew it was gonna happen when he became king. Um, I think they're looking to see how many they can keep at this point and the rest are gonna get uh, you know, package deals. All right, really quickly, it looks like Oprah Winfrey has been markled. Have you guys ever noticed that anybody that they work with, things don't go well for them? Uh, apparently, Oprah Winfrey had a uh, multi-year content deal with Apple TV 
which has been canceled. Now she's only going to work with them on a project by project basis. Uh, so if she hasn't got anything good, they're not working with her. Interesting. They're not renewing. All right, moving on. All right, now we're on to the big news. The Prince and Princess of Wales went to visit um, that area for the first time since the Queen died. We know that it holds a special place in their heart. That's when they were living when um, he was working as a helicopter pilot. Here's some video of them showing up. Watch this. So they're making two stops today. First, I think first, I'm not sure which one is first. They're going to Anglesey and Swansea to meet the different communities and learn about what's going on there. So the first thing that happened was very cute. So when they arrived, they did the initial greeting with everybody. Just watch this. Yes, that was a long exchange, but that was my point. They didn't rush. They stood there. They talked with them. Megan wasn't, you know, like when Megan grabbed Harry's arm and goes, you ready? And tries to pull him down the line. No, these two stay and talk to everybody and show real interest in them. So when this was finished, they started walking through the building and they were met by an adorable little boy that was there to give Catherine some flowers. This kid was just the cutest little thing you ever saw. Isn't he adorable? That, ladies and gentlemen, is four-year-old Theo Compton, I believe was his last name. And this, by the way, where they were, was the Lifeboat Institute. I believe it is. Or I'm sorry, I think his last name was Crompton. I apologize. But this kid was just, just too cute. So what was it this time? They walked into the building again. This place, um, they've recently won, not recently, but they've had a lot of awards for, you know, bravery and, and it, it's just, it's a hard job and obviously they do a good, a good job at it. I think it's lovely how everybody came out to meet them, especially because you could tell it was gray and overcast. And at one point, it actually started to rain. And that didn't stop anybody. Everybody stayed right where they were outside because they really wanted to see them now that they're the Prince and Princess of Wales. Now, the next stop was at the uh, St. Thomas Swansea Community Church where they run food banks and baby cloth banks for the local area. And apparently this was their second stop of the day. And when they got out of the car, the church bells were playing God Save the King or their version of it anyway. But here they are. Watch this.
Then they went walking and they met some of the kids. Watch this. So you know how Catherine is about those kids. She could not, there was one little girl there with pigtails and she couldn't help but play with the little girl's hair. Then they went around the side of the building and there were more kids waiting for them. Watch this. Then they went into the building and two-year-old Charlotte was there. You know how Catherine is about early start, head start. And um, she was there to look at the bank of supplies for, you know, new moms. And this little girl, Charlotte, was just stealing the show. She got into it with Catherine. Then she got into it with Catherine and William. Just watch this. Then they had a few minutes to sit down and really talk to people while they were inside the church. Now when it came time to leave, little Charlotte came running out to give Catherine some flowers and then decided that she was worthy of a hug. Very sweet. This is the thing with Catherine. She's such a natural with children. Here's a little video clip for you. Watch this. So when that ended, the new prince and princess went across the street to meet the people that had been waiting for them. And boy, were their crowds waiting for them. Now, at one point, um, a gentleman spoke to William in um, Welsh. Yes, he greeted him in Welsh. Uh, and then they had a conversation and William said that he was going to promise to uh, pick up his Welsh speaking that he was going to make sure that he improved it since he's now the Prince of Wales but here you can watch the interaction watch this we're looking for a babysitter <laughs> <laughs> I know that with all the controversy going on with their family, I know this really emboldened William and Catherine to see this great outpouring of love. You know, this is the same place where when she and William had just gotten engaged, she went to her first royal engagement to christen a boat. She did a great job that day. All right, moving on. Now, the, the stories are coming out that there are absolutely no plans for an investiture ceremony for the new Prince of Wales, you know, like the one that uh, Charles had, and they talked about it on the news. So listen to this. We are expecting uh, to see the Prince and Princess of Wales in Wales today, uh, heading to Anglesey first, where, of course, uh, Prince William was a helicopter pilot and then down to Swansea in the south, their first visit as the Prince 
and Princess. But it's understood that there are no plans for an investiture ceremony for the new Prince of Wales. Earlier this month, you remember, First Minister Mark Drakeford appeared to strongly suggest that a, a copy of a repeat of the grand ceremony that saw Charles made Prince of Wales in 1969 in Carnarvon would be inappropriate. We understand no ceremony at all, is that right? Yes, that's what I've been told. It's, it's understood there are no plans for any kind of investiture wow. for the new Prince of Wales. We remember those images from 1969. It almost looks like a mini coronation, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, the, the golf Prince ball, Charles. Um, which, uh, which uh, I think Charles wasn't too keen on actually putting on his head, I seem to remember. Yeah, yes, exactly. And in the cost of living crisis, perhaps uh, it was seen by those at Kensington Palace and Prince William himself that it would be a bit inappropriate, perhaps, uh, for a big grand investiture uh, at such a difficult time for so many families across the country. The biggest challenge for Prince William and Princess Catherine is to earn the trust yeah. and respect of the people of Wales. They have long held Wales and the country uh, in their hearts. Prince William's first engagement ever when he was eight years old was in Wales when Princess Diana and Prince Char the then Prince Charles took him to Wales. Mm. His first newlywed married home was in Anglesey. Prince George, his oldest son, spent the first few years of his life living in Wales. So it's a long held tradition of yeah. this country. And he was a, a helicopter pilot there for three years for RAF. Yes. So, you know, a, a really important job. And, and from all accounts, you know, a very happy time for them then. the North of Wales. Yes, it certainly was. I think it was their time to almost be a normal family, as it were, and they chose, Prince William and Princess Catherine took, uh, chose to take George and Charlotte back to Wales during uh, the Platinum Jubilee celebrations in June. And I think this shows that this isn't suddenly a last minute plan to get uh, Prince William and Princess Catherine to Wales for their first engagement. They have a genuine uh, passion and love for the people of Wales and want to shine yeah. the, a light on the opportunities, but also the challenges uh, for people there. Now, one other topic I wanna touch on really quickly, because this is coming up right now. Um, <sighs> about, you know, Megan was claiming that she was hounded by the press and they haven't left her alone. And the only thing that she remembers Catherine going through is being called weighty Katie. And all of this has shown up on the internet lately. And so I just wanted to show you these clips just to show you what Catherine actually went through because she was not allowed to have protection just like Megan was not allowed to have protection. And she was with William for how many years did she put up with this? So watch this. Decide, besides the rude comments about how she's just designed to breed and the magazine covers, more stuff happened to her. There were some paparazzi there and they were shouting, slag, whore, bitch, look this way. They viewed this. Nice one, okay. Oh. Toby, this is unreasonable. Okay, just move your hand and then we'll leave your hand. I'm not going to move my hand. This is my private life. I'm not going to move my hand. Guys, this is enough. Let's go. Leave her alone. Guys, leave her alone. Come. 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 Okay. Thanks, Your Highness. Yeah, she went through that for eight years. Okay? I have never seen one pap photo of Megan being chased by the paparazzi. I remember her calling the police saying that they were at her house, but when the police showed up, they never found anything. Yeah. All right, moving on. All right, people have been asking about how the cats uh, were doing. As you can see, here's Tigger, little Tig Tig, 15 years old, doing very well, uh, healthy. Um, he likes to hide under our bed for most of the time, but he hid even when we were at the other house, but he's doing okay, you can see. Toodles also is here, um, comes out when, when she wants. She can be really mean. But um, let me tell you, Finn is so jealous if I give the cats one lick of attention. It's like insanity. Watch this. Hi, Toodles. Oh. oh, Finn. Can I not pay any attention to the cats? Hi, Toodles. Okay. Mm-hmm. Jealous. 
And then later on, uh, when the cats are not bothering him or Finn's had enough, I found him on the couch and I took this quick little video. Watch this. Good morning, little bunny rabbit. Good morning, little cutie. What you doing? Hmm? Oh, did daddy go to work and you're sad? Okay. Yes, it's okay. You're okay. Yes, you snuggle on your pillow. You snuggle. All right, you guys, lots of information. What do you think about Charles thinking about trying to bring these two back into the fold? What do you think the people of the UK are going to think about that one? Because I just don't think it's going to work. I, I got to be honest. What do you think about Catherine and William and the um, reception that they got when they were in Wales? I, I think that was just lovely myself. So you know I want all of your comments on everything that we talked about. Don't forget to leave them below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I have future uploads. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, Getter, Rumble. You can email me. For those of you who have donated through my coffee fund and through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.